Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. Oh, I have spent the day, I've watched the OVA, I've watched Seraph of the Endless, I've been watching some Seraph of the End content to bring up and build up to episode 13. So we are starting the second core of this series and I am so excited. I'm gonna keep it Seraph of the End on YouTube and Patreon, even though this is technically the second season. They just call it like one season altogether, so I'm just gonna call it the second core. But um, we're gonna do episode 13 today, Human World. I, I've talked about this with the OVAs, but I went and got the Blu-ray because I was tired of Funimation <laughs> lagging. And so I was tired of the lag, so I went and got the Blu-ray. And I also got the Blu-ray because it had Seraph of the Endless on it, and I wanted to watch those. So I am supporting the official release. Let it be known. I'm supporting the official release. Uh, thank you, Patreon, for helping me get that. And so, yeah, I I did a, a sent out a message on the Discord, and Wushin uh, Sweebian got back to me, and I asked if the OP was spoilery. And she said that, no, there is no OP for episode 13. And I was like, oh, cool, great. A little worried about that, <laughs> that there's no OP. Hmm. But, um, but that the OP is not spoilery. There's just characters I may not know who they are, but that's fine. If it's a contextless spoiler where I don't know what the spoiler is and I won't know until I find out, I'm fine with that. As long as there's not any, like, plot spoilers in the OP, I'm good. But there so far is no spoilers in the OP, so yay. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about that. So yeah, we're going to um, look at episode 13 and start the second core. I feel like the first core ended, the first 12 episodes was a nice succinct wrap up. It was like Mika and you know that each other are alive. They've made this resolve, vow to themselves to save the other. Um, both sides are kind of licking their wounds and taking a breather after the last battle. But there's things set in motion. Gurren is shady. Barrett is shady, shadiness all around. We don't know exactly what's going on with you. There's some part of him that's not human, but we're not sure the extent of it. Human experimentation's been going on. There's stuff with vampires going on. It's just, everything's amok. But we spent the last episode just kind of like taking it easy and then the OVA happened and the OVA revealed that humans don't fully become vampires until they drink another human's blood. So there's that. And then um, the Seraph of the Endless was just fun little Omekis. So that part was exciting. But yeah, I, I'm pretty excited to dive into this episode and see what we're going to get into. But let's not waste any more time, shall we? We are going to start uh, Seraph of the End, uh, episode 13, Human World. See what all happens here. And uh, we're going to start that here in three, two, one, and let's go. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what was this episode? This was the most like exposition craziness. I was like, we, it was like the first nine episodes of this series were like a slow burn, like just easing you in, getting you used to everything. Like, okay, cool. We're, we're just slowly going in. And then episodes 10, 11, and 12 were like, episodes 10, 11 were a lot. But that was expected. It was like the penultimate episode. And then episode 12, you're like, okay, setting up some mystery. Gurren's creepy. This episode was just like ready to dunk you into the deep end. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my God. So I, I'm glad that I know why I watched the OVA and Seraph of the Endless. I'm glad that I know why everyone said to watch those before this season started. Because there's the one end that we've established that you don't become a full-fledged vampire until you drink human blood and you keep aging until you drink human blood and that will stop you from aging. So Farad teasing um, teasing him, being like, oh, don't you want to just, this? you're at a good age now, don't you want to stop aging? Are you afraid he was going to judge you if you drink human blood? It's like, mm-hmm, okay. So that all makes sense, the whole thing with the OVA. And then in Seraph of the Endless, there's actually some of the, the ones towards the end that were Shinya and Gurren establishing their relationship. And that gets kind of brought up in this. What? There's so much that happens in this episode. I was like, wait, what's happening? So we we need to go through this and just talk about it. But so the non-human part of you going, so we talk about, so basically what um, Credo, the Hiragi leader is, or the leader's son or whatever, he's the Lieutenant General. Um, what he suggests is that the, the place, the orphanage, that you is from was doing experiments 
on the orphans they took in. And so he came from that region. So there's a possibility that they were they were spellcraft organizations. So they were tied into this whole thing as well. They were tied, but that's weird. They were tied into the demon army before all of this went down. So they were tied to this whole spellcraft organization. They were tied to these demons and packs and everything before the virus spread and the vampires tried to take over. So there's been stuff going on bubbling under the surface for a while, it seems, and we're just now becoming privy to it. Okay. <laughs> but all right, so that could explain why, why you is special because he was from a sect of Japan that was getting experimented on. Okay, and that would include Mika in there as well. Okay, so what the heck? So, and clearly something's been happening to Mika that something's happening. I don't know if it's from him getting injured by you, or I don't know if it's from him getting injured by you. And then they bring up Seraph of the End and the whole Sinners thing. They bring that up again. But, oh my gosh. And then Mika getting tempted. And saying, no, I'm not going to go through with it. But I figured he would have Cruel's blood. So either he's run low on Cruel's blood or it was just a moment where he was low on it and just being tempted in that moment by Farad. And Farad being relentless about that temptation. And then we go back to the idea of how can a weak human survive in a collapsed world? Hmm, indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay. How does that work? I don't know. But... Ah, uh, I definitely Gurren is suspicious. And so then, yeah, Wuxian, you noted, like, I didn't want to be spoiled, but you're like, just remember what Gurren's sword's name is. And they bring it up here, that it's Mahiru, which is the same name as Shinoa's sister. How many people were sacrificed for Mahiru Haragi to complete the cursed gear? And their human's lust getting out of control. And us vampires are so arrogant that we th take everything too lightly. Don't you think so? So the battle in Nagoya. So that's what this is going to be called. Okay, human world. Interesting. So the human world referencing just how messed up it actually is, right? This whole series has been trying to like show humanity versus vampires. But the reality of the situation is, is that they're just as bad on either front. They're just as bad either way. So it's just, it's a dog eat dog world and both sides are horrible, which we see with the Haragi family. I like how... I like how throughout this story, throughout this episode, they they just build the Haragi family up to be worse and worse to the point where Mitsuba is like, watch out. And then we get to them and they are indeed as terrible as they sound. So we got a huge exposition dump, like right off the bat. I'm imagining, I'm just like, wait, what? I imagine if you're reading the manga, you're like, holy shit, we got a bunch of stuff all at once. But so we have Shinoa practicing against uh, Gurren and him saying, lend me your powers, Maharu. And then her being like, mm. so this just explains a lot with Gurren and Shinoa's dynamic because from the very start of the series, they've been, they have had animosity towards each other. And I didn't really know why Gurren was so like awful to her, but now it's almost like there's some guilt tied to it, to Shinoa. He says, why stop? Kill me if you want to. And she's like, well, why didn't you dodge? And he says, I don't mind if it's you who kills me. So yeah, there's some guilt. Gurren has some guilt with Shinoa. And we find out why. Like, he's awful to her, but there's a reason behind it. So her saying, as an atonement for killing, the killing of Mahu Uragi, my older sister. And so then we find out, God, it said she... So we don't see Gurren's face during this whole reveal. We don't see his reaction to her words. She says, falling into an unrequited love for you. She yearned for you. She loved him. And then she got possessed by a demon. And then the demon, and then he killed her. The demon swallowed her up. Okay, so the sword that she had back in episode 12, I was like, that looks like, it looked like Yu's sword. But no, it's Gurren's sword. So basically, she had the sword that Gurren has. If I'm thinking of this right, she had the sword that Gurren has and the demon took control of her and possessed her and he ended up having to kill her to save her. And then her spirit went inside the sword and that's the weapon that he got. That's the weapon he ended up with. Okay. 
he ended up taking the cursed gear that was hers. Okay, he's like, my sister still lives inside that sword, right? The demon version of her. You're possessed by my sister. You completed the cursed gear and betrayed the Haragi family. And you're trying to use you because my sister's telling you to. Ah! So, yeah. Okay, so the idea that Gurren's sword has her sister inside of it in demon form... And she believes that she's, and he's made a contract with her. That's so messed up, right? The idea that she loved him and he ended up killing her. And so she's in the weapon that he uses, like in spirit, right? Or in demonic spirit. The hell? Oh. And so he keeps making comparisons to her being in love with you. Kind of like making a comparison that you is like him and she's like her sister. But she's like, no. And I don't think that Shinoa romantically loves you like she's suggesting that her sister romantically loved Gurren. I don't think that's it at all. I think that Shinoa cares for you and she realized that you likes Mika. I think that she cares for you, but it's not on the same level as her sister. And she's like, I'm not my sister and you is not you, Gurren. So interesting. And she's suggesting that it's, she's like, what's your intent? Is my sister telling you to use you? What's the deal? And then him saying in that moment, if it's, and she says, if it's something that's not going to help you, then just stop. If it's trying to hurt him, then just stop. I am curious because his sword is still red and all their other gear is green. So I am still curious about that, right? Because the vampires use red gear. So what the heck? And he's like, why? Have you fallen for him? You don't want him to get hurt? And she's like, no, that's not it. She doesn't dignify him with a response, right? And that's when he points the blade at her, saying, it's true, she's in here. But I have control. I'm not possessed. Mm-hmm. Sure you aren't. Okay. And she says, what if I don't trust you? He says, I don't care. Believe what you want. Uh, I, Gurren is so sketch. And the Ragi family suspects him. I I feel like Shinya maybe is the only one in that family that trusts him. But Shinya is not trusted with the Haragi family. They just, he's the adopted son. That's interesting. He's not even blood. He's just adopted. You're, you're not even blood. <laughs> I think of forgetting Sarah Marshall. He's like, I could end you. You're not even blood. So, yeah, Shinya. Mm-hmm. Okay. Curious. And Shinoa's like, well, what do I do? I don't trust Gurren, but I don't really have a choice. Gurren's sketchy, but what can we do, right? And so then we get her finding you and you's trying to find out how to help Mika. Like, how does he turn Mika back into a human? Is that even possible? Right? And... <laughs> And it's evolution through spellcraft. And she calls it porn. She calls him looking at porn when he's just looking at the biology of vampires through spellcraft. Which we find out is kind of coincidental because he's from a spellcraft organization. He's tied to it. Interesting. And I want to point out that the books that they have here are very similar to that flashback of him and Mika. Where he was looking through the book. It kind of looks similar in the, the binding of it looks similar to these books here in the library. So now that we know that the orphanage was like with a spellcraft organization, is there something tied to it? Or was that, I don't know, was he with the vampire colony around that time? So maybe it's just the binding of the books. It might not be anything, but... I like that Shinoa puts on a front where she's like teasing with him. But in all reality, she, she realizes what he's trying to do and she's trying to help him. So I do like that about Shinoa in that she... She, I don't think, she knows that you cares about Mika. And she's like, do you want to turn Mika back into a human being? And he's like, yes, I do. And she's like, I can share with you the information I know, but that's all I can do. I I really like this episode. God, this is great. And she's like, oh, well, you're really cute and obedient when you want to know something. And he's like, just tell me what you know. And so we find out that it is not normal for vampires to turn humans into other vampires it's not it doesn't happen a lot which is a good thing of world building because i was like why don't the vampires just turn humans and then we get this really cool piece of lore that i like quite a bit the vampires dislike growing in numbers and so that's interesting because in like all the in a lot of vampire stories it's like well why don't you want to have just more vampires but then it makes sense 
there's only so many humans around. So the food supply, if you're drinking blood, the, few, the food supply is limited to begin with. So they don't want like a whole mass horde of vampires because then they're going to run out of food, which are the humans, right? Which is a very curious contradiction because back in episode like three or four, Shinoa was telling you that the humans needed to populate their numbers and grow their numbers so they could fight the vampires. So you have on one end the humans being like, we need to have more kids so we can have a bigger army to fight the vampires. And on the other end, you have the vampires being like, we don't want more numbers because then we'll need more humans, which in turn will make a bigger army potentially to fight us. So if they rebel, so it's a very curious cycle, right? It's so interesting. I like that contrast in this, but I like the bit of world building and that only nobles have the authority to turn humans into vampires. So we figure out that someone high up must have turned Mika. And I'm sure that you was thinking of Farid, right? Because that seems to be the only vampire he really knows of. He's a sort of, so that's his theory, but they don't know cruel. So she's like, are you going to kill all the vampires? And he says, no, Mika's alive. Right now, that's enough. He's not going to run off and kill all the vampires. Just knowing Mika's safe is okay. But Shinoa doesn't know how to turn him back into a human, if that's even possible. So he's like, well, that's too bad. Huh. And so I'm surprised that you, Bakanu, Bakayu, Bakayu only now figures out that she's Shinoa Haragi and that her family is tied to the, the lead of the demon army, which I kind of like Shinoa being like, I don't want to be associated with them. No, thank you. I'm fine being down here at the bottom of the food chain. Fine by me. I, I, I respect Shinoa's character a lot for that. And I, I like that she's not wanting to associate with the family because they are quite awful or they seem to be quite awful. So yeah, we then get where he meets up with Mitsuba, right? Or right before, let me see. He meets up with Gurren beforehand. And Gurren, I like, Gurren has his whole thing unbuttoned, which he didn't before. So I'm like, curious. It's odd. Mm -hmm. So Gurren, Gurren is so suspicious in this series because he has this like little moment at the end of the episode where he's like, oh, we're all family. And I'm like, you just told him you weren't family. Like at the beginning of this episode. Okay, Gojo voice actor. Okay, Kuro voice actor. Okay, Shiguri voice actor. You're not sketch at all. But he tells, you, he tells you the story of the old man who freed a crane caught in a trap and talks about how the crane wove a beautiful cloth with its own wings to return the favor, saying like, I saved you. I rescued you from that orphanage. I gave you this life. You owe me. I taught you how to live and wield swords. Like, you're mine. So, and then he was like, what the hell? What's your deal? Like he's, Gurren is so suspicious in this episode. And so he's like, I want you, he's like, I own you. I want you to return the favor to me. He's like, so don't just give in to the Haragi family. And he's like, oh, I get what this is. This is just about you and your political nonsense with the Haragis. He's like, I don't care. <laughs> he was like, I'm not one of these noble families that you're, that you're from. So I don't care. I'm just going to go in there and do whatever. He's like, you may not care, but that's how the world works. He's like, I don't have to worry about it. Leave me alone. I'm not going to abandon or betray my friends. So you don't have to worry. And then he says here, he's like, well, you've got one thing wrong. He says, I'm not your friend. Okay, yeah. So that that's what it is. Because at the end of the episode, I'm like, you say you're family. But what he was getting at, he's like, I'm not your friend. But I'm family. And so we're going to save. He's like, if family is what you care about the most, then I'm going to be family with you and we're going to save Mika. So what the hell? It's just this... This whole episode, so much happens. He's like, I'm your superior, your lifesaver, your guardian, your god. And you's like, yeah, okay, you're annoying. <laughs> Gurren. I still think Gurren's the traitor. It's either Gurren or Shinya at this point. Or it's them together. It's both of them together if it's not one of them. That's the thing. It's either, either, either Gurren is the traitor and he's working with Farid. Or Gurren is giving information to Shinya, who's giving information to Farid, and he's the traitor. Or both of them are working tandem. Either Gurren knows that Shinya is working with Farid, and they're both in on it, and they're both traitors. Or Gurren does not know that Shinya is working with Farid, and it's Shinya that's the traitor, or Gurren's the traitor. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's Coretto. I don't think it's that blonde girl, although it could be her. But 
It's either Gurren or Shinya or both of them together. That's what I'm calling now. Mm. So then we get poor Mikas, Mik, Mik, Mitsuba. <laughs> we get poor Mitsuba who's been promoted, which I'm I'm really sad about because I'm like, how does that work with her being part of the five? I'm like, and she's sad that she's been promoted because she thinks it's just nepotism. She thinks it's just politics because she's a member of this family. And he's like, I'm not laughing at you. Yu's like, he's like, I didn't know that we had two princesses on our team. So whatever. He tries to like make it lighthearted so that she, he pulls a, sh a Shinua, uh, he pulls a Shinoa. He pulls a Shinoa to like make her feel better. And he's like, I just now found out Shinoa's a Haragi. And she's like, are you stupid? <laughs> so it kind of works. But I like that she's ashamed that she believes she's been promoted only because of her family name. And not because of anything she did on the battlefield, which is kind of true. And Shinoa kind of points it out. And Shinoa is a lot more blunt with Mitsuba, but it's kind of like a tough love thing. And Yu tries to make her feel better. And so he's like, I'm not, I like how there's, there's friend and family separated in this episode, right? And whenever Mitsuba talks about family to you, it's Mika because Mika is his family. Whenever you talks about his friends, it's Mitsuba, Shinoa, Yoichi, and Kimizuki. And whenever he's talking to Gurren, Gurren's like, I'm not your friend, but I am part of your family now. Okay. So that's interesting. We're going to tie back to that at the end of this. But she's like, you're going to be asked in this interview and they think that you're a spy, that you're working with the vampires because they figured out that somebody on the inside is working with the vampires and they suspect Gurren, right? Interesting. Interesting indeed. And she, Shinoa kind of tells you to be cautious about the Haragi family, but Mitsuba straight up warns him. She's like, they're the worst. And they kind of are. Like them hurting Yoichi and Kimizuki, I was like, that is not necessary. Mm -mm. No, no, not necessary at all. But Credo. Credo doesn't seem like he messes around, like he minces words. I'm like, mm, I don't, I don't trust. It's like, it's seriously like, who do you trust in this series? And honestly, I think that Yu has every right to trust Mitsuba and Shinoa and Kimizuki and Yoichi. I think he has every right to trust them. I don't trust Gurren at all, even though he had that little speech at the end. Nope, don't trust him. Um, and I think Mika can trust you, but... This series, like, this episode came out with, like, guns blazing. This episode was, like, ready to dive in back into the series. We didn't have an ED. We didn't have an OP. It was just, like, are you ready for all of this stuff going down? If every episode from here on is, like, this one, I'm on board. I'm ready. Because I'm, like, what the hell show? It just came out of nowhere. I was not ready for it to get this crazy right off the bat. Right? And so we, we established that Shinoa is not going to accept a promotion, no matter what. She's not about that life. And meanwhile, of course they interrogate you. And they get him to kill a vampire just to prove a point that he's not a traitor. That he's not working with the vampires. I like the establishment that we don't see the girl's ability. We don't see the blonde girl's ability. Coretto has like lightning powers with his sword, which is fun. Um, and then, of course, Byakumaru is the sniper rifle that Shinya has, which I love the weapon. I love it has a little bayonet on the end of it. It's like, really? But Shinya saying, I'm the weakest one of us. So if you can't handle me, there's no way you can handle Credo or Gurren. I like that he puts Gurren in there, too. Not the girl. The girl's left out. The girl's like, what am I, chopped liver? I do like the girl's cape jacket. I love that she has the cape thing with her side ponytail. She'll probably die. She has a side ponytail of death, probably. So she's probably going to go. You know, and then Credo has like the in ingenium eyebrows, the crazy eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And you cheer Hiakuya. Interesting. So yeah, Shinya is interesting. And Shinya seems to have a very strained relationship with his family. He's, he's kind of like in a Gurren situation. I don't know why they adopted him into the family, but that seems to be the only reason he's with them is because he's adopted. And because he's probably strong. But yeah, he doesn't look anything... He doesn't look anything like the other Haragis, but he has the, the mentality. I commented in the Seraph of the Endless that he kind of has a very Shinoa-like mentality. Like his his aura about him is very much like Shinoa. He's like, and they suspect me too because I'm good friends with Gurren. So again, I'm like, is this one of the things where they're like hiding in plain sight and they're being suspect and they're just trying to prove everybody that like, no, we're a suspect? What? I just... The weirdest part is at the very end of this, the camera pans from you to Gurren 
and it pans the exact same way that it pans from Farad back to the doorway at the end of episode 12. It pans the same way. So I'm like, it just seems so suspicious. And yeah, I can't believe they just roughed up Yoichi and, and Kimizuki. Like, why? Why did you bitches do this? It's not fair. And then he just basically used like, I don't know what you want from me, but he's like, I'm just here. I'm not a spy. It's such a weird interrogation scene. And so basically, Kareto was just trying to confirm his suspicions that you is from this region. He's like, why did Gurren take you in? What was the point? Gurren doesn't seem like the type of person to take in people out of the kindness of his heart. And so then it's almost like they're trying to tell him too, like to give you the pieces of information he needs to put two and two together. I, I wonder if they're trying to string along Gurren too to out Gurren, right? Like they're giving you enough information. Like in this moment where he's explaining the thing about the Spellcraft organization, the Hiakuya sect was the largest Spellcraft organization in Japan. And we see Shinya looking at you like, what are you gonna do with this information, you? What is this? And he looks over from you to Coretto, like he's trying to figure him out. He's like, what are your, why are you giving us this information, Coretto? Why are you giving this kid this information? And he's like trying to read his reaction. Being like, they took in orphans for human experimentation. You're probably a lab rat. And the fact that Gurren was in the lab during all this is super suspicious too. So there's all this suspicion. And yeah, I do think that Gurren is trying to use something inside of him. I think that they're totally right. But yeah, Coretto's like, I want you to work for me and I'll guide you. And he's like, screw all of you. Like, I don't, I'm just helping my friends. I don't care about you and your squabbles with Gurren. Y'all handle your pol political jazz however you want to. But I'm just here to do my mission and help my friends. Get out. It's, it's so bizarre. I'm kind of floored by this episode. It's so crazy. And so, yeah, he's like, I don't know what you and Gurren are squabbling over, but Gurren wouldn't use this kind of method. He's like, Gurren's, Gurren is sketch, but he wouldn't be this sketch. And then Coretto says, yeah, that's why he's where he is at. He's not willing to do what we'll do. That's why he'll never catch up with me. God, this family, this Ziragi family is messed up, y'all. They're messed up. And so I like that Shinya has an oddly ferret vibe to him, right? And does anybody else think that? Shinya has a ferret vibe to him. I'm just going to say, when he laughs, he's like, my feelings exactly. My gosh, this is a terrible place, isn't it? <laughs> like, I just get a ferret vibe with Shinya. Just a weird vibe. And you's like, what the hell is up with these people? <laughs> so I'm wondering if he gave you all of this information, if Coretto gave you all this information, knowing he was going to reconnect with Gurren and to try to get you, because they know, I'm sure they know at this point that you has a connection to some vampire, whether or not he's aware of how extensive this goes. And if he's going to try to get, I wonder if they're just trying to set up a trap where they get Gurren to try to help you to rescue Mika. And that's how they're going to say that you is, and that Gurren and them are traitors. I don't know. It's just, it's the craziest thing. We set up so much in this episode and it, it goes somewhere, but then there's so much left off the table. It's fascinating. Oh my gosh. What? What? So Yeah. So yeah, they come out there and then Gurren shows up. Yeah, and he's like, Gurren, you need to explain everything. And then there's that camera movement. There's that camera movement, right? That camera movement over to Gurren and Shinoa. Like, who are they looking at? Ah, what is this? It's wild. He's like, I heard from Coretta Haragi that me, my family, Mika, and the others were all guinea pigs. And he's like, did you save me in order to use me? And Gurren's honest. He's like, yeah. He's like, yes, I don't have the luxury to save people with no value. And he did kind of say, like, he could use them at the beginning of the series, I guess, but we didn't know about this whole experiment in the orphanage thing. And he's like, and knowing that, are you going to get upset over it? 
And so there is this idea of you being like, well, at least Gurren's honest. He's not trying to like mince words and do all this double crossing weirdness like the Haragis are. But still, even if Gurren's honest, he kept this from him for so long. And I feel like Gurren's not telling the full story, even now. But Yu's like, you know what? No. He's like, if you hadn't saved me, I would have died back then. So fine, I do owe you. He's like, all I want to know is whether I'm of use of, to you or not. He's like, can't, and if you need me, could you also want Mika? That's the thing. So use like, if you want to use me for whatever you're planning, whatever bonkers, batshit, crazy thing you have planning, can you use Mika too? Can I get Mika in on this? Can we save him? He's like, if you also want Mika, then I don't care if I'm a lab rat. Like, I, he just, just please tell me how to get Mika back. So yeah, so on one end you have Farad being like, here's how you're going to get you back, Mika. And on the other end you have Mika, or you have you asking Gurren, how am I going to get Mika back? And it's, it's wild. And everybody's like, okay. And he says, like I said before, everyone here is your family, including me. We may not all be friends, but we're family. So you just have to work together to get your family back. Then if we're on the same team, then you properly teach me how to use the cursed gear. And he's like, that's my intention. What the hell? What the hell show? Bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. This episode was insane. I, oh my God. So yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where we're at. This episode was wild. What? I, so I still don't trust Gurren. I don't. Gurren supposedly is going to help train you now so that they can go and save Mika. And you is like, I don't care if you use me, but as long as I can get, as long as you can use me to get me to Mika, that's all I care about. I'm like, you, you do not know what you're asking because you does not remember what he became in episode 11. So Shinoa and all of them do. Or Shinoa does at least. The others may have been passed out, but Shinoa knows. So there's like, who's going to double cross who? The Haragi family is suspicious of Gurren. They're suspicious of Shinya. Shinya is suspicious now. Like, it's like this big game of who do we trust? And if we don't trust someone... How are we going to use them despite that? So it's, it's, oh my God. And then we had the whole thing with Mika and Farid and the temptation there and something's going on with Mika. So, uh, welcome to core two. Holy crap. So yeah, yeah. I, I liked that this didn't lag. <laughs> I was watching this on the Blu-ray and I'm glad this didn't lag. This was wonderful. But what an episode. My mind is like, Holy crap, y'all. I was not expecting that going into this episode, but here we are. <laughs> so if, if every episode is like this, it's going to be awesome. I this episode, this episode may be one of my favorites already. And just because of how bonkers it is. It, I have this like really uneasy vibe after this episode because it's given us so much exposition and setup, but there's still so many unanswered questions. And now more questions have popped up. And the suspicion games are on. Who's working with Farid? What is Seraph of the End? What is all of this leading up to? Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to be spoiled, so please no spoilers. But I am so curious to know, did this episode come out of nowhere for everybody else? Did everybody else, was everybody else watching this episode going, well, strap in, here we go, Seraph of the End. Time for season two, time for core two. I'm very curious about the OP and ED, but we're going to get that next episode. So it's fine. It's all good. But holy crap, I am so curious to know your thoughts down below. I'm like, I'm wired now. Hmm. So yeah, in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care. And yeah, I, I'm going to think about this episode a little bit more before I watch episode 14. I'm going to think about this. Maybe rewatch it again, but I'll be back very soon with more Seraph of the End. Bye.